This is Wobbly Wallaby. Today we're looking at Oracle Nightmare. This guide will be split into three parts. First, there will be general tips, then I will commentate on a run from the DPS side, and then a run from the Saints side. Oracle Nightmare is a mode where not knowing the mechanics can kill your party. So I also include tips to not annoy people that are carrying you. The biggest annoyance is going away from keyboard when doing Oracle Nightmare, as you can kill your teammates by not paying attention. First, we'll cover the general tips. For foods, anti-death foods like Original Will Green Barbecue are very good. Surviving death is very important and this gives you some extra chances in case you make some mistakes. Damage increasing foods like Satisfied Feasts are also very good. Eating bee meals can also increase stats and attributes that are important for your class. For consumables, on your item bar, have Yagdressel berries for restoring HP, honey for restoring both HP and SP, and panacea for removing debuffs. The run will go poorly if a critical person keeps dying. For pets, I highly recommend you choose pets that can revive you, such as the Obuin or the Osiris, which are excellent in Oracle Nightmare. Here's the dungeon map so you can be familiar with your environment. The cards spawn in these locations. A great tip from Revival for no group positioning is to stand at this card and put the card tornado between the other two cards so you can hit everything as they spawn. This is where the MVPs will spawn. Don't aggro the MVP unless you're ready to take it down. You can strategically ignore the MVP and only attack it when the set of cards is more ideal for your team to take it down. Monster, mini cards, and debuffs can spawn in the other card positions. If there are no MVPs, you can also see monsters or debuff cards showing up in this position as well. The dungeon buff cards spawn here. These buff items can be picked up by you or your teammate, and will disappear if no one picks them up. Armor gives you damage reduction. The cheater card gives you immunity to damage from some skills. First Aid Kit heals HP and cures status debuffs. Full Swing gives you increased attack speed. K Cupendeen increases damage. This looks like a spelling error from the devs. Lightsaver Pill gives you immunity to death blow. Mestinen gives you increased crit. Pocket Watch increases move speed but decreases attack. Shield gives you damage immunity. And Skate Shoes increases your movement speed. I usually save the survivability buffs for the Saint, as a DPS I'm usually not that far back anyways to easily access these buffs. For the Auto Circle, you want to stay here to avoid things like Fire Ox. But a note is after all the cards are done, insta-kill poisonous smoke starts creeping out from the Outer Circle so you want to get away from the edge of the map. This is the Inner Circle. If you're standing here, be aware that you're going to be hit by stuff. It doesn't make sense for a Stella Hunter or a low HP person to be standing so close to the card's spawn points. They should be standing back. However, tanks or tanky DPS can stand near the card's spawn points. Next are the dungeon cards. The set of cards changes each week. Some weeks it can be brutal, like having 5 lolly runs. For each run, that set of cards are randomized. If you don't like the order of the cards, then reset the dungeon by leaving and coming back, or having everyone die. The cards will come out in a set of 3. The cards keep coming even if you don't clear them. The cards come every 30 seconds. In total, there are 60 cards to clear, and so there'll be 20 waves per run. Here are some notable cards. First is Archangeling. Make sure you use the skill First Aid to remove the debuff that makes you unable to damage things properly. Next is Blinker. This makes you unable to dodge criticals. Burst Sign. This deals damage if you don't clear the round fast enough. Evil Rattan. This can strip gear, so make sure you use the skill Stay Calm and double check that everything was equipped. If not, then you can equip them manually. Fire Ox. Make sure you spread up. It is recommended that you wait until 2 seconds is left on the countdown to play dead. When you play dead, the Fire Ox will not be aggroed by you. However, other creatures can still hit you. If you're running ran or got woken up from play dead, don't run towards teammates. Try your best to dodge fire ox while dealing with the other cards. Glacier. Everyone is frozen. Use the mark card to counter the freeze effect. House of Cards MVP. He can cast multiple cards like Glacier, 
sand, meteor, and more to annoy you. The randomness can be very dangerous, so kill him as soon as possible. Lightning Rod. This is unavoidable damage. Use Yagdrasil Berries or Heal to counter. Lolly Run. You need 100% stun resistance when dealing with her, otherwise it will be very difficult to clear Oracle Nightmare when she's constantly putting you or your teammates in stun. Meteorite Armor plus Death Cut Armor in the Oracle Mirror Extract is an easy way and cheap way to achieve this. You can also use the Orc Hero card if you're rich. In addition, open up a chat room to avoid being pushed around the map. You don't want to be pushed around because the more people are spread up, the more chances there are for her to spawn pools that will stun people. So that is another reason why people like to stack up when they're in the chat room. They want to avoid being spread out to avoid the stun. Even if you don't have 100% stun resistance, you can still attack. You're not guaranteed to be stunned. But you never know when you'll be stunned at a critical time, so it's best to have 100% stun resistance. Magnetic Field. This makes you immobile for a few seconds. This is not good with Meteor. Meteor. Watch out for the red circles. You'll be insta-killed if you're hit by the Meteor. Noisemaker. You get silenced, and you can use the Marduk card to counter the silence. Orc Lady. She can strip gear, so make sure you use the skill to stay calm, and you can also double check to re-equip manually. Pendulum of Fate. The next wave of cards comes in 20 seconds instead of 30 seconds. Poison. It reduces everyone's max HP. Sand. An insane prolonged cast time, which you can counter by pre-casting skills before the countdown ends. To stop casting something, Unequip and then re-equip your weapon. Say if you cast something with an enormous cast time like Meteor Storm, you'd be stuck trying to cast things for a good minute, so you need to unequip and re-equip after the wave so you can cast normally again. Seed of Death. Get damage over time and can infect teammates. You can spread out or ensure your saint out heals the damage. Succubus. She does group healing for the enemies, so she must be killed as soon as possible. If she spawns with the MVP, make sure you kill the succubus first before engaging with the MVP. Also, if there is still an MVP around from a previous wave, make sure you wipe them out quickly otherwise they might heal the MVP back to full again. Tranquilizer. Stuns you momentarily. Whirlwind. Go blind and get damaged. Use Panacea to counter blindness and use heal to restore HP. There are other cards, but their effects weren't noticeable, their effects weren't listed in my status, or they weren't annoying enough to provide information. Also, these cards were collected in a 3 week span, sometimes there are cards that did not show up during these runs. However, I did cover the notoriously annoying cards such as Fire Ox, Lolly Run, and House of Cards. Now that we know the mechanics, let's begin with the Oracle Nightmare DPS run. Before I enter, I ate a DPS food, which was 6 satisfied feasts, and B meals. I wore my DPS equipment for Noku. What I do now that I don't do in this video is I put my equipment in the item bar so I can quickly switch to my offhand for Mark, stun resist gear for Lolly, and my regular DPS armor. I now also use the Oracle Mirror Extract to get the 50% stun resistance. For my skills I'm just using Car Tornado and prepare for Elite for buffs. Nothing too fancy here, Memphis Guardian is more about being in position to deal your damage. I'm with very strong carriers, so I don't check the card order, I just start. Wave 1. The first monster card is easy, however the two Fire Witch cards can be annoying since they have a lot of HP. Wave 2. There's Fire Rock so I spread out and play dead when the counter is at 2. You can also dodge if you can run around. The Fire Dragon woke me up.
The other two monster cards can be dealt with next round, or if you can kill it while avoiding Fire Ox. Wave 3 Another annoying mini with Flute Player. His spawned creatures can steal your SP. Whirlwind also makes you blind and get hit with damage. The Mina card is easy to deal with. Wave 4. The Noisemaker can silence you. The Succubus group healing is annoying, but luckily no MVPs are around. The Evil Rattan can also strip your gear. This is an easy wave. Wave 5. The King Clown MVP is coming, so we get into position. The Poison card reduces our max HP. The Fire Dragons are easy to deal with. We burst down the King Clan MVP as quickly as possible. Wave 6 Whirlwind and Lightning Bolts are both unavoidable damage, and we get smashed with both in this wave. The only way to counter this is to heal up and use berries. The monster card is easy, the hardest part is surviving the massive amount of damage that's dealt to us over time by that unavoidable damage. Wave 7 Fire Ox again. This time I play dead properly. The other two monster cards are easy. Wave 8, Lolly Run. We agreed that Revival would make the chat room. I run to the chat room to avoid being pushed. Unfortunately, I don't stack very well, but you should try to. The other two monster cards are easy to deal with. Wave 9. Seed of Death. Get your heal ready. The other two monster cards are easy to deal with. Wave 10, another lolly run, so I don't leave the chat room. The other two monster cards are easy to deal with. Wave 11, Sand. This will add some crazy cast time. Try to pre-cast during the countdown. The other two monsters aren't much of a threat. Wave 12, Archangeling. Use the first aid skill in case he casts Broken Heart on you, which stops you from damaging things properly. Also, Seed of Death is here so we get hurt with damage over time. There's also Noisemaker which can silence us. This is a tricky wave.
Round 13. Nightmare, Eva Ratten, and a Monster. An easy way to beat. I wasn't able to figure out what Nightmare does, since when I tried it afterwards I still don't see what it really does. Round 14. Glacier is coming up. I now put my equipment in my item bar to avoid opening up the bag, and switching to my offhand that has the mark card. There's also Magnet, so some people won't be able to move temporarily. The monster card is easy to deal with. Wave 15. Blinker means you can't dodge criticals, but the other monster cards are so weak that it doesn't matter. Wave 16. An easy set of monster cards. Wave 17. Burst sign. Magnet, and a monster. The monster can be beaten easily, so the other cards don't matter. Wave 18. Lord of Death MVP, Blinker, and a Monster. We get into position to burst Lord of Death down. The other cards aren't a problem. Wave 19. Whirlwind is coming up so I'm getting ready to heal. The other two monsters are easy to deal with. Wave 20 an easy round. Nightmare and Noisemaker don't do much. Just burst down that monster and we're done. Great job everyone. Next we look at the Oracle Nightmare from the Saint's perspective. Let's take a look at Orihime's skills. In the auto bar, there's Prepare for Elite, Song, Collect Heal Heal, and Single Target Resurrection. Inside Prepare for Elite, there's Blessing, Magnificate, Gloria, Angelus, Imposture of Madness, Assumptio, and Bard's Crown. On the hockey bar, there's the Mount, Honey, Yagdressel Berries, and Panacea. She eats six original Will Green barbecues to cheat death. This is the 5 star food that gives you the most cheat death ability for any food. This is Orohime's Oracle Nightmare specific setup. She uses the Marduk card and headgear to avoid silence. She uses the Mark card in offhand to avoid freezing. She uses the Comet Warfare armor that adds 50% stun resistance and other resistances against other abnormal statuses. She uses the Peko Peko card for extra HP. She's extracting the Death Cat armor to make up for the remaining 50% stun resistance. With this gear setup, our Saint has 139% stun resistance and a total immunity to silence and freezing. 
Also, these gears provide a lot of damage reduction and adds a lot of HP for survivability. Let's begin the run. Wave 1, an easy round with Blinker and two weak monster cards. Wave 2, another easy all monster card round. Or he may picks up shield for damage immunity. Wave 3. Eva right hand strips gears and two easy monster cards. An easy round. Wave 4. Again, Eva Rattan and two easy monster cards. An easy round. Sephragium helps to reduce cast time of all skills. Rebuff when things are less hectic. Even the skills you can't fit into prepare for elite. Or he may spam slight shield on the DPS party members, and she puts safety wall around herself since she knows she won't be running away from that spot, as opposed to a teammate that might run away from that spot and thus waste a blue gem. Wave 5. House of Card MVPs needs to be killed as soon as possible. First sign and another weak monster are the other cards. House of Cards cast meteors so we have to dodge. Wave 6. Meteors are incoming, so dodge the red circles. The other two monster cards are easy. You may choose to put your mount on hockey bar to dodge quickly. Make sure to resurrect your teammates with epiclesis when you see both their HP and SP bars are empty. Get within range and use Colossio heal when you see your teammates HP dipping. Wave 7. Nightmare and two monster cards, nothing to worry about. We see the anti-death food at work as Orihime gets a death blow from the meteor but doesn't die. Quickly plop a Yagdra cell berry to restore your HP to full health. Wave 8 Eva Rattan and two monster cards. Nothing to worry about again. Wave 9. Fire Ox is coming, so get ready to spread out. Make sure auto is turned off so you don't break your play dead. When the countdown hits 2, play dead in the corner. Succubus are here too, but there's no real threats for them to heal. Once you see the countdown again, that means the fire ox wave is over, so you're free to get up and cast all your skills. We see the cheater card for damage immunity to certain skills. Wave 10. Lightning Bolt hurts. Use Colexio Heal and Epiclesis for AoE heals and resurrection. Burst sign and monster cards aren't a threat.
Wave 11. Magnetic immobilizes people. Lightning bolt hurts us all, and more evil rattan gear stripping. Just spam Calesio Heal and Epiclesis until our HP is restored to full. Wave 12. The King Clown MVP is coming, so people get into position. Blink for lower critical resistance and poison lowers our max HP. Wave 13. If we didn't kill King Clan fast enough, the succubus could heal him back to full HP again. Glacier can freeze us and Tranquility can stun us too. There's a full swing which gives increased attack speed. Keep spamming Light Shield, Safety Wall, Colloquial Heal, Song, and prepare for Elite. Wave 14. Fire Ox coming with two monster cards. Find a free spot and turn off auto, and play dead when the counter goes to 2. When the countdown reappears, get up and rebuff. Wave 15. Noisemaker can silence people, but Marduk card protects the saint. Fire witches are tanky so they take some time to kill. The other Mino card is easy. Wave 16. A weak set of monster cards, which is good for us. You stay calm and check your gear from time to time to make sure you're still fully equipped. Wave 17. Noisemaker can silence us, then an easy monster and evil rattan can strip gear. An easy wave. Wave 18, the Lord of Death MVP, Noisemaker, and Burst Sign. Lord of Death can be annoying, but the rest are okay. Wave 19. Whirlwind, Blinker, and a Monster. Just need to keep healing everyone and use Panacea to counter blindness caused by Whirlwind. Wave 20. Magnetic and two monster cards. A pretty easy wave to end it off. Lastly, our shoutouts. I want to thank my wife Orihime for helping me out with the saint side of this guide and for providing commentary on her point of view. Shoutouts to Baby Avocado, Irander, Staple, Revival, Eolus, and Sylvana 
for showcasing the Oracle Nightmare mechanics recorded in this video. Also thanks to Daikazi, Myrander, Revival, and Bellissimi for additional input to the guide. Also lastly, Bunny Plant, Creeperzoid, Boss, and Puddle for sharing their Oracle knowledge with us. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe.